Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. So, if you saw my recent video working on my Yamaha XJ6 diversion, if you're new to my channel I do stuff on motorcycles quite a lot, while I was doing that series I needed to take the oil filter off and I didn't have a tool to do that. And I thought, well I can buy one, but I could also try and 3D print one, let's see if it works. Now oil filters, if you don't know about this on motorcycles, are renowned for being extremely tight because the sealant on the inside of them, when it gets oil into it, it expands. It's designed to do that and it seals up very tightly. So I printed this from Thingiverse, which is a 65mm oil filter uh, socket basically. It goes you know, on a ratchet like this and it just jumped over. Now, I think that's because this was a little bit oversized because when I put it over the filter, it had a little bit of a rock. So I thought, well, let's see if I can do anything about that. And I drilled and tapped three screws through the walls on the side. I then tightened those right into the oil filter and turned it. And this had enough force to not break, but cut strips in the oil filter. Now it did crack, as you can see, but I think that's because I put this screw in, not straight. Or oh, it moved. I'm not sure one or the other, but anyway, it didn't work. So I then purchased the proper tool, a metal version, and this didn't work either. And you can watch that video if you want to see how I ended up getting that fuel filter off. But this brought up the subject of, well, how strong is a 3D print? And to that end, I've printed these two 14 millimeter sockets from PLA. Now for the people that want to know all the sort of specs for the 3D printing, it was printed on an Ender 3 S1 in PLA Plus. It's 100% infill at a 0.12 layer, millimeter layer height. On this, I did 90% infill, if I remember rightly, and geroidal uh, paths. It's very strong, but yeah. So the idea to test this is gonna be really simple. I have got a piece of wood, and I'm gonna put that piece of wood in here. Then I have a bolt with a washer that's going to go through the piece of wood. Another washer on the back. And then a nut on the back of that. So I think you can see where we're going with this. I'll put a ring spanner on this side to keep that still. As you can see, this is, goes on just like any normal socket. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to progressively torque up this nut until this breaks. Then what I'm going to do is find out where that was, redo it up with a metal one to the same torque or maybe a bit over, and then I'll try and undo it with a plastic one. Honestly, this is really interesting to me. Uh, I was gonna do this test anyway, and I was like, hang on a minute, I'm a YouTuber, I should do a video on this. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start at nine Newton meters. Can it do that? The reason I'm using a piece of wood is it gives it something to squish, it's not metal on metal that's gonna... Okay, well that gave up the ghost real fast. Um, do I have a hose clamp? Yes, this is now at this point completely cheating. I thought honestly it would make it to somewhere around, you know, nine or 10 newton meters, it's nothing. Uh, but no. So we now have our hose clamp reinforced socket. Can we get to nine newton meters this time? It's just gonna break up here, isn't it? Oh, what was that? Oh God. No, it's just, it, it just munches. Now, how close were we to nine? Even though this is kind of pointless at this point, we'll do it up to 10. And then we'll try and undo it with the last one. I know some people might say, put a hose clamp on this one first. I, no, it's cheating. But can it undo 10 Newton meters? Here we go. It's not gonna, is it? As you can tell, I honestly thought these were gonna do way better than this. Come on, you can do it. <gasps> okay, it undid 10 Newton meters. Okay, we're gonna try it 12 Newton meters. Now, obviously, if we went much further than that, this wood would turn into diamond. Undo 12 Newton meters. You're also saying the wood's slowly letting go so it's not as tight each time. Okay, okay, we, we are really scrabbling to get a video out of this now. <laughs> 
Come on, 12 Newton meters. No. For completeness, I know you want to see it. Safety squints engaged. Now, of course, there is something to note here. This possibly had a much better chance of working because of how much more material was built into it and why it's so much stronger. The bigger this is, the stronger it's going to be. Having a, a standard size, wall size, and a 14 mil socket made of plastic is very hopeful. Uh, but what's interesting to me is the fact that it didn't actually split. Well, it did split along the... the this is printed like spirals this way. It actually split vertically to start with. It wasn't that that went, or maybe it's that that went that started that going with it. It could have just peeled off. Yeah, so the answer is how strong are 3D printed sockets? Not very. Well, there you go. Hopefully you found this video interesting or useful in some way. Useful can only be taken in one way, which is don't 3D print sockets. And then everyone watching this is going, well, who the hell would even try that? I was curious, all right? Um, if you did enjoy the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new here, if you want to see stuff all motorcycle related, from riding them, reviewing them, to uh, fixing them a lot. Uh, and I'm currently in the process of doing that, as I say. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon, like the peoples whose name's going to roll at the end of the video. Now.